What's up everyone? Welcome to part two in my DIY Vapor Blaster series. This entire episode is gonna be an overview of the addition of this set of controls, so stick around. Thanks again for joining me. Let me get the formalities out of the way first thing. Um, I'm not an electrician or an electrical professional, so this isn't meant to be uh, electrical advice in any way. I'm just showing you my setup uh, in the spirit of just sharing information. Let's set this down and have a look inside. So let's just quickly have a look at what I've constructed this out of. This is an eight inch by eight inch plastic uh, junction box that's made for uh, when you need to have electrical connections in wet locations. To the side of it, I have attached a quad receptacle. Uh, this junction box was cracked, so it wasn't really usable uh, in wet locations anymore. So we've repurposed it for this control box. Really, all of these controls are are just a fancy extension cord. Here's the main power coming in that's fed through these strain relief connectors on the side of the box. This smaller wire here runs to this foot pedal. Let's open it up here and have a look. Uh, what we have going on here is really quite simple. I'm bringing the main feed in from this electrical wire here, and right away I'm connecting it to a three-point junction block. I've brought the ground up and around the top. Everything is connected, all the grounds are connected to this one terminal here. So from here, common wire and the hot wire are coming up through this terminal block and coming up and over and connecting to the top of this contactor. Through this contactor, it runs into the back of this quad outlet box. That's the simple breakdown of what we've got going on. Uh, so let's break that down a little bit further. What I'm doing here, since the ultimate uh, goal is to have um, certain outlets that are controlled um, in different ways and so right away what I'm doing by running the power through this contactor is I'm making this side of the outlet is controlled by this switch right here when you flip that switch it energizes the coil that pulls this contactor in and when that happens it gives power to these so half of the switch on this side, on the top here, gets its power um, right away by branching off the line when I connect it to the bottom of these terminals here. And the reason for that was is when I plugged this box in, I wanted to have the lights in the cabinet come on right away. This outlet here has been separated from this one and it has a separate feed that comes through the contactor through over on this side. And the reason for that is, is that I need to run that power through this foot switch so that when you step on this foot switch it's uh, connecting the power side for this outlet and it's energizing the air valve that we have plugged into that and that's all run through the foot switch that in a nutshell is how this fancy extension cord works so let me get the cover thrown back on this and then we'll install it on the machine while i'm putting everything back together um, I thought I'd just pull the valve down here and just have a quick look at it and let you guys see it. This is actually overkill for what I need here. The actual flow capacity for this valve, um, even though I'm reducing it down with couplers and everything, is uh, way more than what I need. Also, this uh, output port here is plugged. It's meant for running uh, something like an air cylinder in two directions. Since I only need air on and off, really this valve doesn't need to be this fancy. So <clears throat> I might not end up using this valve uh, in the end. I might get something that's a little bit more in line with what I need and save this for another project. Um, but for now, it's doing the job. So, And this uh, is another example of something that's been um, repurposed off of an old piece of equipment. It, this valve's in good condition, but it's way older than you think. I to dig around a little bit to find some information on it. So, but I mean, it works perfectly fine. It's great. The other reason why I chose it is because uh, the solenoid here takes it's 120 volts. So that's why you can see I've just got it wired up to like a regular plug-in. 
and this works perfectly with my control setup. I can plug this into plug in that is operated by the foot pedal and then it turns this valve on and off. And the other nice thing about it is, is that the uh, solenoid when it's on draws uh, next to nothing. The overall load on the entire setup that I've got, it works nicely and it's great for what I would still consider a prototype. It's perfect. And if I get to use it on another project, uh, all the better. All right, let's get this installed. Okay, I've got the control unit uh, back up on top of the vapor blaster. I've got the power cable. I'm gonna plug this in now before I plug anything in. And I'm gonna plug in the transformer for the lights and the lights should come on right away. Before I plug anything else in, I'm gonna reach over here and I'm gonna put the switch on. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna take our plug in here that operates our air valve and I'm gonna plug it into the outlet marked foot switch. And then now I'm gonna test this air valve with the foot pedal. And I can hear it coming on. And there's actually an indicator light on the side of the valve that tells me that it's at least getting power. The last thing to do is to plug the pump in, but I don't wanna plug that in with the contactor engaged. So we'll close that off. And I will plug the slurry pump in and then we are ready to go. We'll get the compressor fired up and we'll get something in there that needs to be cleaned and uh, we'll take it for a test drive. All right, this is what we're gonna be vapor blasting today. So uh, I'm not sure how hard it's gonna be to get this paint off there, but we're gonna give it a go and we're gonna see uh, what she looks like afterwards. Okay, everything's ready to go. We got full pressure on the compressor. <clears throat> I'm gonna fire the pump up here in a second and we'll get started, so let's go. Well, there you go. That turned out pretty good. I just did half of the uh, top clamp here so that you could see. There was a couple of small spots that I missed, but you could always go back. I did a little bit more in there, just overall, just to give it a little bit of, of a polish. Uh, a nice technique I like using is you let the air pressure <clears throat> in the tank sort of die down to a, a lower level and instead of uh, cleaning, it kind of does a little bit of a polishing. So that seems to work pretty good. 
So there you go. I really wanted to take a moment to give a shout out to Matthew over at How To Motorcycle Repair. When I watched Matthew's videos on how he made his cabinet out of wood, it pretty much convinced me that that was the way that I had to go. And I ended up uh, with the hybrid cabinet that I have here. His videos have lots of really good information if you plan on building your own wooden cabinet. And I'm pretty sure he sells plans too. I'll put a link uh, down in the description to his YouTube channel. Be sure to check it out. So I've started an affiliate link section down below in the description as well. And I'll include anything in there that I've used on any of my builds uh, that I think are worthwhile sharing as well as any tools or anything that I'm using that I'm happy with. So be sure to check those out as well. So if you do end up purchasing anything through those links, Amazon will pay me a small commission, which will help go towards supporting this channel. So if you haven't seen part one to the Vapor Blaster series, you can watch it right here. It's where I go over the construction of the basic cabinet. Also, if you're into more Vapor Blasting or motorcycle videos, you can check out my CB750 playlist right there. That's all for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.